Your Eminence, Cardinal Christophe Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, and our Holy Father's personal representative. Your Excellency, Bishop Peter Jugis, my brother bishops within the metropolitan province of Atlanta and beyond. Dom Placid Solari, OSB, Bishop Abbot of Belmont Abbey. Friar Michael Heine, Order of Friars Minor Conventual, Provincial of Our Lady of the Angels Province of the Conventual Franciscan Friars, priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the Diocese of Charlotte. Friar Michael Thomas Martin, Order of the Friars Minor Conventual, to be ordained the fifth Bishop of the Diocese of Charlotte. I greet all of you who are present here today with the words of St. Francis of Assisi, Pax et Bonum, peace and all good. A special word of welcome to Bev Martin, Friar Michael's dear mother, and Judy and Jeannie and Ellie, Friar Michael's sisters and their families, and to your beloved father, Don, who today looks down on you proudly and joyfully. For our Michael's family and friends who are with us on this glorious day, or our viewing live stream, or on EWTN, you have loved and supported Friar Michael in so many different ways throughout the years and have made him the prayerful and humble priest that he is today. And to our confreres in the conventual Franciscan family, both Friar and Bishop-elect Michael and I are very grateful for the spiritual formation that we received from the time we entered into this wonderful community and for the many friendships that continue to sustain us in our ministry. Like Cardinal Pierre, I would like to recognize in a special way Bishop Peter Jugas, the fourth Bishop of Charlotte, Bishop Jugas, you have been a faithful shepherd of this local church for over 20 years. And you are a native son of this diocese and served in many parishes prior to your ordination as bishop, as well as serving as judicial, judicial victory, victor. Bishop Jugas, you have guided the diocese through unprecedented growth among Catholics and communities across Western North Carolina, opening new parishes and schools, promoting and fostering vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, as well as founding St. Joseph's Seminary. When you were ordained a bishop, you chose as your Episcopal motto words from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians the love of Christ impels us. You surely have reflected the love of Christ in so many ways as a humble worker in the Lord's vineyard. Rest assured of our prayers for your health and that you may have a blessed and fruitful retirement and continue to serve God's people. God bless you, Bishop Jugas.
My dear brother Michael, thank you for your yes to a future unknown to you, but known only fully to God. Allow your yes to be shaped by the unique yes of our Blessed Mother, Mother of the Church. Have within yourself a humble yet confident trust in God's plan for you as you serve the church as a bishop. Such faith enables you to lay down your life freely for the new flock which you have been called to shepherd. Among the most important words spoken by the Lord Jesus in the scriptures were, I call you friends. Episcopal ministry is, first and foremost, a call to a deepened friendship with the Lord Jesus. Cut off from him, we can do nothing. You will be even more dependent on the Lord's loving kindness as you step forward in this service of sacrificial loving for the church, both local and universal. As a contemporary apostle, you stand in a continuous line of succession, reaching back to those first apostles who became friends with the Lord Jesus. Do all you can to call the people of the Diocese of Charlotte to an ever more loving and joyful friendship with our Savior. And by your own example, lead your seminarians, priests, deacons, and consecrated religious towards a renewed personal relationship with the Lord. As a bishop, be an extension of the love of Christ in the service of his people. It will not always be easy, but it must be renewed as an intention each day. Your Episcopal ordination is a consecration in and to the love of Christ. All Episcopal ministry, my dear brother Michael, is subject to the word of God. In a few moments, the gospel will literally be placed over you as an open book. By preaching and teaching this word of life, which you do so well, your first and most important responsibility is to be a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the hope he offered to our world. Never tire of reminding people that Christ is alive, that his love is real, and that his mercy is endless. As you govern this diocese, your mission above all is to be an evangelist inviting your priests and the people to encounter Christ and to know him better. In today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we heard the text that is proclaimed each year at the Chrism Mass. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. With these words, Jesus began his ministry. St. Paul exhorts Timothy in the second reading, you man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Take these words to heart so that you will lead God's people not only by your words, but by the example of your life. 
How often we have heard today's gospel in which the apostles had been fishing all night on the Sea of Galilee and had caught nothing. They do not recognize the risen Lord on the shore until this stranger tells them to cast their nets, their nests, their nets down on the starboard side where they pull up a miraculous catch at dawn. My brother Michael, you have chosen as your Episcopal motto the words spoken by Jesus to Peter, Duke in altum, put out into the deep. It is the Lord who invites us to put out into the deep as Peter did, as you reminded us last night in your homily. Putting out into the deep is an invitation to trust in the Lord at all times. It means relying less on ourselves and more on the one who calls us. The call of Christ, Duke in Altum, is a challenge for each of us. With Peter, we can put out into the deep, having caught nothing all day, and see the miracles that the Lord works. Duke in Altum was a favorite expression of Pope St. John Paul II, who used it often, especially in his apostolic letter at the beginning of the new millennium in which the pontiff outlined priorities for the Catholic Church for the third millennium. These words ring out for us today, and they invite us to remember the past with gratitude, to the present with enthusiasm, and to look forward to the future with confidence. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. May these words always guide and direct your ministry. And remember the words of our Father, St. Francis of Assisi. Start by doing what is necessary, then what is possible and suddenly you are doing the impossible. At the press conference on April the 9th, Bishop Jugas said of Bishop-elect Michael Martin, his love for Jesus and the church has been so evident. As a dear friend of our Bishop-elect and as a brother friar, in the conventual Franciscans, I can attest to the truth of this statement. I first, I first met Michael Martin 50 years ago in 1974. He was a skinny little eighth grader. <laughs> and since then, he has blossomed a bit. And he knocked on my classroom door in Archbishop Curley High School in Baltimore, where I was teaching freshman English. The high school was in walking distance from his house. And he wanted to see if the teachers were up to his standards <laughs> before he would decide to apply. Well, I can tell you that he picked the wrong classroom to visit. He still is not quite right emotionally. <laughs> Fifty years later. But despite the fact that I made him a little uncomfortable, he decided to attend the school anyway. And after he graduated from Curley High School, he joined the Franciscan community. And after he was ordained a priest, 
He returned to Curley to teach, coach, and would later go on to become admissions director, principal, and president. Michael and I have spent much time together in community as friends and as co-workers in the Lord's Vineyard. Over the years, Michael has had a diverse and fruitful ministry from his time as teacher, coach, and admissions director at St. Francis High School in Hamburg, New York, at Archbishop Curley High School, his alma mater, and where in 2007 was the recipient of a prestigious award from then Pope Benedict XVI for his service to the church. For 12 years after that, he served as director of the Catholic Center at Duke University. And from there, he was assigned to St. Philip and Easy Catholic Church in Jonesboro, Georgia, as pastor. And now, God has called him to the Diocese of Charlotte as its fifth bishop. My brother, all of these experiences have formed you and prepared you well for this new chapter in your life of service. You said at the April press conference, I'm excited to get to know you and to listen to the ways in which, together, we can respond to the call of the Holy Spirit to be disciples of Jesus. And immediately after saying this, you were already getting to know and listen to your people. From visiting with the chancery staff to handing out food with the staff and volunteers of Catholic Charities to the poor, to teaching a class in one of our local Catholic schools here in Charlotte. You were already at work. And then you visited Holy Angels, founded by the Sisters of Mercy, which seeks to provide care and opportunities for those children with developmental disabilities and delicate medical conditions. Several photos were taken that day, but the one that stands out the most for me is of our bishop-elect holding a child in his arms as, he explore, as she explored the San Damiano pectoral cross that he was wearing. It is an image of love and compassion that teaches by example that every life is precious. This is the road that lies ahead of you, my dear brother Michael. And as you begin your Episcopal ministry, as you put out into the deep, may you be guided by this prayer written by our spiritual father, St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, help me to live this day quietly, easily, to lean upon your great strength trustfully, restfully, to wait for the unfolding of your will patiently, serenely, to meet others peacefully, joyfully, to face tomorrow confidently and courageously. And Michael, as a bishop, may the Lord grant you his peace. Amen.